Okay, so uh, the presentation is about the measure of the seismic activities during a space analog mission in the Brazilian semi-arid, uh, located in Caixara do Rio 200, that's a city in northeast Brazil. And the crew of the analog mission was made by me, uh, José Anchieta, uh, Professor Júlio Rezende from UFRN, uh, Ofi Ruimi from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem in Israel, and also uh, Aderson Nascimento that uh, wasn't uh, in the in the uh, that march, but he was helping us uh, virtually. So you can pass to the other one. Uh, this research was motivated by the attempt to simulate uh, how would be the, the future of the seismic activity evaluation on Mars. So we tried to simulate uh, a space where we, we was uh, astronauts in, on Mars, and we are trying to get like information from the, the seismic activity. So we can do a lot of things with the, the this data, like trying to uh, uh, model uh, a simulation of the interior of Mars and trying to measure some possible uh, seismic events that can happen on the planet and everything else. Uh, this activity, it happened during the Space Analog Mission uh, 132 that happened in November uh, of 2022. In this uh, Space Analog Mission in Rio Grande do Norte, uh, as I said before. Uh, the goal of this research was to simulate, uh, as I said, uh, a human exploration on Mars. So in geophysics, we, uh, we primarily work at the exploration part of the science. So you can pass to the other one. Well, uh, it's very well known that the importance of understanding the Mars quake as a guideline to un uh, understand magnetic fields and how the planet uh, Mars is alive or not. Or, so we say that a planet is alive when it has uh, lots of uh, seismic activities uh, coming from the, the interior of the planet. So NASA uh, launched on 2018, uh, landing on, on 26th of November of 2018, uh, the lander inside that's a abbreviation of interior exploration using seismic investigations geodesy and heat transport uh, with a unique purpose to understand how seismic activity happens on mars so it's nasa launched a kind of equipment that can measure seismic activities also in this analog mission we use one uh, that's called seismometer but uh, it's a bit different from the nasa one the equipment we used was a seismometer made by HEFTEC, the model uh, 130. We used it as well an accelerometer, a seismic GPS, and a palm. A palm is a, a kind of a cell phone uh, that we can use to adjust some, uh, some of the equipment, uh, some of the equipment, uh, we can do some adjustments in the equipment, like setting uh, the, the, the time that it will be operating and things like this. And a 12 volt battery just to turn on all the stuff. Uh, the, equi the equipment, it was installed over a rock in at Habitat Marte, uh, like uh, around 400 meters from Habitat Marte Space Analog uh, Station Complex. And it belongs to the uh, UFRN seismology lab that's called LabSys. And Aderson, one of the guys in our crew, is the professor who is in front of the, the LabSys. So he, uh, he gave the, the equipment to us so we can use in this, uh, in this work, this survey. Uh, to install the equipment, we needed to follow some steps. And it was the part of the of all the, the analog missions. So at first we need to use a compass and we used a Brunton compass to set the north. Why we, we, we need to set the north? Because the accelerometers, it can measure uh, the waves coming from different directions. So uh, when you set the north, uh, 
you can you need to to uh, uh, put the accelerometer facing the knob so you can know uh, from which direction the waves are coming from and you can like try to uh, try to see if the if some fault or some event that happens nearby it causes the the anomalies we can see in the waves. Uh, then we connect the GPS cable uh, to the seismometer so we can uh, have the, the coordinates of the lo location and the equipment will operate uh, by, that, by that coordinates. Uh, and we need to install it in an open area without interference, so without uh, some metal things uh, nearby and things like this. Then we connect the palm to start the acquisition. And uh, the last thing we need to do is connect the 12 volt battery to turn on all the equipment. Uh, the equipment that acquired the data and the seismic utensils were, were brought back to the habitat math where we can analyze it uh, using a software uh, also made by HefTech and the software is called Compass. It's a software where we can uh, get all the data and transfer to the computer and analyze all the seismic waves that, that will be seen one of them uh, in, at, uh, further. You can pass through. To... Okay, so here are some photos that we, we took in the in the the mission. This is the the equipment we are we were using. That's me, Ophir, and Julio, uh, where we were installing the equipment. You can see that the this this gray uh, equipment is the seismometer, where the black one is the the battery and all the cables that we connected it. Also, that's me uh, putting some cables in the in the field. Uh, this rock that's above us is where we put the uh, we installed the equipment. Because to install it, we need as a, a solid basis, so we can put the equipment in like uh, the ground where it's not uh, rock solid. So, because we need it to be really stable. That's me uh, using the compass to take the north, so we can put the accelerometer uh, facing the north. And in at this time, we need to be really careful because. Uh, presence of metal things can uh, lead to errors uh, in the measurement of the nerve. Uh, this, this little box is the accelerometer. As you can see, uh, it has like a triangle in the bottom where, the, where we can yes. to face the north. And we need, as well, we need to, to put it in the, uh, a stable level. So, the, all the measurements will be correct. The, the other part, uh, a little further from the accelerometer, is the GPS. And this is the, the records that we, we got from the acquisition. So this is a, a, a main data that we collect uh, with like one day of, of survey. And we brought back the equipment to the lab to, to uh, see the data. And as we can see from, from this, this primary analysis is that uh, we are able to see some anomalies that you can, you can see that the, the highest peaks in the waves, uh, the blue arrow in the middle one uh, points the arrival of the S wave and the red arrow points the arrival of the P wave. So in a seismic wave, we have the, they are divided by two uh, waveforms that we call P and S. P are the fastest waves uh, where you can measure. That's why it comes first. And S is the, the, is the slower one, but stronger. Uh, and from analyzing uh, our primary analysis of the data, we can see that uh, we have a lot of noises. That's something we, we, like don't, we don't want to see in the data, but it can come, and you can pass, please, uh, Julio. But the noises can be originated by a lot of things, just as well. Uh, people walking around the, the station can uh, cause some noises, uh, but 
as well, uh, we can see uh, that the anomaly is really is really apparent. So, uh, in all the data acquired, we can see, as I can, as I as I said, lots of anomalies, but we also can have uh, lots of noises uh, can, that can cause some misinterpretation. So, while the noises can be originated by rock falling events, because the the space analog complex it was located in, in a mountain area. So we can have a lot of rock falling events that happen nearby. Uh, the major anomalies can be caused by some seismic events that can occur due to the activity of a great fault that we have here in Northeast Brazil that's called Samambaia. But uh, as I said, this is just a, a primary analysis of the data acquired. And to confirm all these interpretations, we will need to do some more surveys in the future to generate uh, more seismic data. So uh, as we can take out as lessons from the from this, this survey is that this area leads to lots of, of uh, opportunities to do researches and to prepare papers and something like this in the seismic area. And simulating it on Mars will be really, really helpful for uh, the future of seismic. Okay, thanks so much, uh, Sheta, for the presentation, and I stop in the recording.